and Tell me. I saw you backstage and I was like, man, a lot of times actors are shorter. <laughs> and you're not no, like like no, you I'm, see them on and you always think oh man they're all tall and then you and then you go to events and you're like oh like a lot of them are like average height right and then it's like you're not you're like super tall man super I well I'm five three so yes I'm six three okay see a that's super foot. time that an is... actual Smurf standing next to you <laughs> or I'm, I'm an so, ogre yeah no it's cool to be tall it's cool <laughs> no you had such a big year last year with Top Gun Maverick yeah. and you got married yeah you got married. yeah it was a big year. That's a big year. Where did you plan to do all that? That's no, a lot. No, uh, my wedding was a COVID like casualty. Actually, we were originally supposed to get married uh, the summer oh, of 2020. My gosh. Yeah, we had a good time. Um, it's a shame she's not attractive, <laughs> and you're not attractive. Y'all look like those people when you buy frames. It's not a real picture. No, yeah, it's like you look like actors <laughs> at wealth, <laughs> but you. <laughs> You're just like paid to be in the photo because you're so beautiful. Well, um, we ended up getting married in Italy. Uh, we were supposed to get married in 2020. Yeah, and uh, where we got, in Italy? We got married just south of uh, Florence in Tuscany. Okay. The first trip my wife and I ever took together was to Italy. She lived there for 10 years and worked there for a long time. So oh. we decided we wanted to do a destination thing. So we got That's like so cool. 200 of our closest friends to come party with us in Italy. I love. I'm yeah. literally about to take a trip in March yeah. to Italy. I love Italy. Where are you going? Uh, we're going around Tuscany, yeah. yeah. It's like I've been all around, but I've never really, so like, fun. I don't know, adventured in that area. So, but. so I heard that someone famous showed up at your wedding that your mom was more excited about <laughs> than you getting married. <laughs> yeah, so I've known Anna Kendrick. We, we were introduced through a good friend of ours, Tommy Alter, um, who hosts this podcast with J.J. Reddick. And we were out at dinner one night, and we were all talking about summer plans, and everyone was like, oh, I'm going to be in Europe, I'm going to be in Europe. And we're like, okay, cool. Like, if we see each other, sure, we'll bump into each other. Literally, she was in Florence the weekend of my wedding. Yeah, what? she knew the date. She, she, was, the she date. was like, oh, that's so weird. But, like, uh, she's a wedding crasher. <laughs> I like it. I'm not going to say that. But no, but... <laughs> But no, so I want to say that that <laughs> makes her even more lovable. It's awesome. She she came. She was a champ. Uh, she actually came as like a plus one uh, yeah. to this like kickoff drinks thing that we did like two days before the wedding with a buddy of mine. And I was like, you got to come to the wedding. You're in town. How crazy is this? You got to come. Like, yeah. how random is it that you're in the same place? Comes. She's like, I can't do it. I won't do it. And I'm like. You, I can't find a dress. You're in Italy. You can find a dress. Yes. This dress is everywhere in yeah. Italy. You can find a dress. So finally, she gets to the wedding, and literally after the ceremony, my mom walks over to me and pulls me to the side. And my mom is like, did you know Anna Kendrick was here? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, well, mom. it is my and wedding. she's like, I took a picture with her. And I was like, mom, I just got married. Like, I just got married. So let's just perspective. <laughs> let's just, just bring it in. still at the wedding, just so you know. But it was a good time. We're supposed to be up here in importance <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. She's like, I'm over you. Yeah. Um, but where are you? you from originally? Because one of your parents was in the Air Force, right? Yeah, so I was born in Sumter, South Carolina. Okay. Uh, I went to 12 schools in 13 years, bounced all around. Wow. Uh, I ended up going to high school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, middle school and high school. That's shout, different. I, shout out to Tulsa. <laughs> I was just in Tulsa this weekend. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I bounced around. My dad was in the Air Force. My grandfathers were in the Air Force. So it's a family thing. We moved around a lot. A so, lot. do you think that that helped you? Like, we moved on a bit when I was kind of... Do you think it... I think I'm adaptive because yeah, of that. Yeah, for sure. Like, I think that that probably helped you. Or do you think that's one reason why you became creative as well? I, I definitely think, like, there was... If I didn't like something going down at, like, the previous school, mm -hmm. I would create a whole new character and persona for my new school. An actor at a very young age. You know age. what I'm saying? Yes. My middle name is Ramon. Yeah. Uh, and literally, I showed up to one school and for two Go. weeks... For two weeks, I was like, Ramon. <laughs> I knew you were going to do it. Ramon. Ramon. And I got destroyed <laughs> because there were Spanish-speaking kids in my school, and they would start speaking Spanish, and I'd be like, I have to go to the bathroom, <laughs> and I would just El turn Mario. around and run away. Yeah. Right. So literally, at the next school, I was like, that's not going to work, so we got to figure oh out Oh, my God, else. I love that you were like, Ramon. And you were like, I'm going to be sexy <laughs> yeah. here. I'm going to be you know this one. My voice would get deeper. Yeah. Like, my eight-year-old voice was like, Ramon. <laughs> 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 Turning all the ladies on with your one word. <laughs> so today is the first day of Black History Month. You are part of a show made by and starring black creators on Insecure. Yeah. So I don't know, how do you think that that show furthered the narrative for black people in entertainment overall? Yeah, I mean, representation, Great cast. right? Yeah. Yeah. Representation is so important. Representation is so important. You know, I, I, it's amazing. 
uh, how many people still walk up to me and are like, I've never saw myself until that show. Like, I never saw myself on TV until that show or a story or mm -hmm. I went through that with my boyfriend or my best friend or whatever it is. So it's like sad but inspiring. Sad but, yeah. sad but inspiring. Yeah. But I think it is, you know, I think to know that you're not alone, I think is something yeah. because obviously those stories weren't just created out of nothing. Um, they were created out of real people's experiences. And so I think like that's a huge thing. And I think also like when you look at the legacy of those shows, you know, if you look at that picture, the folks in that picture, especially behind the camera, like everyone has gone on to either write another show, write a movie, direct a movie or a TV show. Yeah. I mean, literally Natasha has a show. Yeah. Prentice is a, has a couple of shows. Wade has a movie. I mean, everyone in this group literally has gone on to do absolutely amazing things and they're creating opportunity for other people to create legacy uh, and bring other people into the room who often, often don't get the, get the opportunity. Opportunity is so important. Yeah. I heard that you, speaking of people just coming up to you, I heard that one time you were in an airport, was it? <laughs> and a, a lady came up and slapped you. Yeah, yeah. And she, she what? reached back to like eighth grade and she was like, Ramon, I got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Your name was not Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. No, you lied. Lies. Um, yeah, so I was, I was at the airport and I was going to get, uh, I was going to like get some Advil or something from like one of those little turnstiles in like the magazine store. And there's a woman standing on the other side of it. And before I turn it, I'm like, hey, excuse, and it's gonna bump into her if I turn it. So I'm like, hey, excuse me, I just wanna turn this. She turns around and looks at me and her eyes literally were like this big. And she reached back. And it was so far that I could have probably dodged it. It was like slow-mo. It was like slow. But it was also, I couldn't believe what was happening. And literally she, I mean, you could hear her hand cut through the wind. Just and like slap across my face. Which is not okay. At all. No. But she immediately went to like Macaulay Culkin and she was like, oh! Like she started screaming and she's like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to do that. You remind me of my ex-boyfriend. Like he, we, and you're like, Lawrence is just like him and like seeing you is seeing him. And like, I'm just, and literally it was this crazy moment. Like ma'am, yeah, that's what, not okay. What am I supposed to say? That. Lawrence is triggering, you Lawrence. know, <laughs> like. <laughs> What am I supposed to but say? But that's a character. Yes. Okay. But for some people, I, listen, I always like say. Like if somebody walked up and was like, I hate it since you've been gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's your problem, ma'am. Like, what? That's true. That's yeah, true. that's weird. That's, I, that's, that's definitely not acceptable. That's because you're nice. <laughs> um, so t tell us about the new movie, Somebody I Used to Know. Who do you play in it? Uh, I play a character named Sean, uh, who's like a hometown boy, never left, and has, al has always had this like, perfect vision for his life and what he thought it was <laughs> supposed to be. And uh, that all kind of gets upended in this weekend when he's supposed to get married. And uh, Alison Brie and Dave Franco, the amazing power couple that they are, they wrote this movie during the pandemic. They were sitting around watching a bunch of rom-coms and they were like, we love this genre. Yeah. We miss this genre. I love like, this genre. We want to do something here. Yeah. And they wrote this movie together. Dave directed it. Um, Kiersey Clemens uh, plays... Uh, the woman that I am marrying in this movie is also just so brilliant. Um, and uh, anyway, Allison's character comes home one weekend, we bump into each other, and she's like, I think I still like this dude, not realizing that I'm getting married that weekend. And so basically it's uh, her, you know, trying to see if she can get in the way of uh, my happiness. upcoming, yeah, uh, yeah, my upcoming uh, wedding. Okay, yeah. so they're married and like he's the director, right? Yeah. So like you and Allison have like in an intimate scene. <laughs> like what's that like? Like with the husband? It's, you know, it's awkward, you know. That's awkward yeah. as hell. Yeah, it's, it's, I know you're all actors, yeah. obviously, like you're paid freshly, you're good at what you do. You've been Ramon, you've been I, all these I people. Mean. But like, <laughs> but I just mean like, that would be really awkward to be like, is this okay? Like, or am I'll I never, fine? I'll never forget, there was a scene that we did. It's actually this really beautiful scene. They spend this whole night together. I'm not gonna give away the whole thing. Amazon's probably here watching me right now. <laughs> um, but but they spend this whole night together and then there's this, this scene in the morning where they're like sitting at this spot that they used to hang out at and watching the sun come up. And I'll never forget, we were probably about this far away from each other. And Dave's like, Jay, you could scoot a little closer. And I was like, huh? Huh? You say what? You want me to do what? You scoot closer? Okay. Fine. 
<laughs> it's like <laughs> Jay, Jay, that that was like you barely even moved, man. Like, can you scoot closer? And I'm like, are you sure? There's just it feels like we're really close, Dave. It feels this, like room for to the your Lord. wife. It feels like I'm really close <laughs> to your wife, man. Um, but it was great. He was a he was amazing about it. They're both amazing. They're so cool and easy. I mean, obviously you're all actors. I get it. Yeah. I just mean it's still for a person that's mean? not an actor. I'm like. <laughs> Why are you so close? Like, why are you, what are you doing? I, I definitely was still like looking over my shoulder the whole time. Like, are you good? You're good with this. You're not gonna hit me across the back of the head <laughs> yeah. when I turn around. To I don't mean this. anything. I'm a really good actor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well, streaking plays a cameo in the movie, yes. which I love. Who doesn't? Have you ever really done that? I have. Yes. I have streaked. as well. I've streaked before. Yeah, I streaked across yeah. uh, in the middle of my campus when I was in college. Oh my God, you're totally like old school. Yeah. <laughs> We're going streaking <laughs> in the quad. <laughs> like, it's like, that's amazing. That's, it was in our quad, actually. <laughs> it literally was in our quad. It was, you uh, were the inspiration. It was a basketball dare. I played, okay. I played college basketball and it was a dare. It wasn't a dare. It was like, it was a dare, uh, more or less. Let's just call it. From like a bunch of my teammates, we were all together one yeah. night and uh, myself and one of my other teammates streaked across campus at like, one o'clock in the morning. Nudity is night. funny. Nudity is funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's great. It's funny just, when you're running too. Just, you know, it's just all <laughs> you know, everything's just out there. You know, uh, you know? streaking is different when you get older. <laughs> 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 it gets a little more sloppy. <laughs> it's, like, it's a little different. I don't know. Like this doesn't uh, feel as good as like, it's like I don't care, but y'all probably do. <laughs>